Warm greetings. This is Adam West with a webcast for Tomorrow's World. In the days leading up to Ash Wednesday and the commencement of the Catholic observance of Lent, images from carnival celebrations around the world reveal the rampant moral corruption associated with these festivals. From Mardi Gras in New Orleans, Louisiana, to the most extravagant revelry of the carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the connections between these carnival celebrations and Catholic Lent is undeniable. Partiers the world over cast off restraint and indulge themselves in physical pleasures and debauchery. Many let go of their inhibitions. They find boldness in the anonymity of masquerade masks and vibrant costumes. Scripture is very clear that the kind of reckless and flagrant carousing indulged in by these party goers is not how true Christians are to conduct their lives. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 3, the Apostle Peter writes, For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. No true Christians will not be conducting their lives in this manner at all. It's important for us to consider the roots, not primarily of the carnival itself, but of the traditional observance it precedes, the religious ritual known as Lent. As these modern festivities are dubbed as pre-Lenten celebrations, what is the origin of Lent? Does Lent have any biblical significance? Or rather, is Lent solely a human tradition of men? According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, in the article titled Lent, it states, quote, the Teutonic, or German, word Lent, which we, Catholics, employ to denote the 40 days fast preceding Easter, originally meant no more than the spring season. Still, it has been used from the Anglo-Saxon period to translate the more significant Latin term quadragesima, meaning the 40 days, or more literally, the 40th day. This, in turn, imitated the Greek name for Lent, tesserakosti, 40th a word formed on the analogy of Pentecost, Pentecosti, which last was in use for the Jewish festival before New Testament times." End quote. The significance of this connection of word meanings reveals the counterfeit nature of Lent. It is based upon the New Testament holy day known as Pentecost, an observance that is still in practice today by true Christians. Pentecost is observed on Sunday, after 50 days have been counted from the Sabbath occurring during the Days of Unleavened Bread. It is not only a Jewish festival, but also a day kept by all the original apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ. This is clearly seen in the New Testament in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, Acts chapter 20 and verse 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 8. Lent and Easter both serve as counterfeits of Passover, the Days of Unleavened Bread, and Pentecost. Continuing in the Catholic Encyclopedia, quote, Some of the fathers as early as the 5th century supported the view that this 40 days fast was of apostolic institution, but the best modern scholars are almost unanimous in rejecting this view. For in the existing remains of the first three centuries we find both considerable diversity of practice regarding the fast before Easter and also a gradual process of development in the matter of its duration. We may then fairly conclude that Irenaeus, about the year 190 CE, knew nothing of any Easter fast of 40 days." End quote. In the book by Alexander Hislop, The Two Babylons, on pages 104 and 105, he writes, quote, the 40 days abstinence of Lent was directly borrowed from the worshippers of the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. Among the pagans, this Lent seems to have been an indispensable preliminary to the great annual festival in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Tammuz." End quote. Tammuz was a Babylonian false messiah. Again, a counterfeit for the true messiah, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, there is mention of this false messiah in Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 14. Nowhere is Lent observance commanded in Scripture. However, it is a practice condemned by the Bible as pagan. 
A major component of the observance of Lent is fasting or doing without certain things such as meat, eggs, milk, or even more so in modern times, whatever the Lenten observer chooses to abstain from. The key is that these practices do not derive from biblical or apostolic authority, but are nothing more than traditions of men. Those participating in the practice of Lent are sincere. However, they are sincerely deceived. The Apostle Paul warned the brethren in Colossae, and you and me as well, saying in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Christ himself warned that it is possible to worship him in vain. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9, he states, And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. The observance of Lent is not according to the Christ of the Bible, nor the apostles, but is a clever counterfeit of the biblically commanded holy days, especially Pentecost. We should reject not only the revelry of the pre-Lenten carnivals, but also observance of Lent as well. To learn more about the true holy days commanded in Scripture by the Creator God, read our informative booklet, The Holy Days, God's Master Plan. Thanks for watching, and for more information, video, and material on biblical and news topics, please visit us on Facebook or at tomorrowsworld.org.